Uh, okay, now we're going to get more into some of the things that, you know, instead of making me laugh, make me want to crawl in a hole and disappear for a while. This is a post that y'all saved me in. And I often save these because I like to kind of keep a pulse on what's going on. And before we go any further, can you please just not ever go to anything that I look at on stream or that I post a video about on YouTube and harass these people? That is absolutely never why I make videos or do these. I just, I really think it's important to dispel misinformation. And a good way to do that is by keeping a pulse of what's going on in the misinformation sphere. But in order to do that, I often have to look at things that people are posting. So please don't, you know, go attack these people. This is also a fairly old post because as I've said, this Instagram is one of my least active platforms at the moment. Anyway, so in a previous post, I sh this is the people who posted this their caption. In a previous post, I showed how birth control pills can cause abortions. This is patently false. There is ample data for me to confidently tell you that birth control pills absolutely do not cause abortions. In fact, there is some argument to be made, and this is always a hard point to get across, but there's some argument to be made that actually, if your primary goal is less embryos that don't implant, then being on birth control is going to be actually more effective at that than not being on it. Because when you are on birth control, the chances of ovulating are way lower than when you're not on birth control. And that means the chances of creating an embryo are way lower. So even in a scenario where you made an embryo, and this is not the truth, okay, but if there was a scenario where when you make an embryo and you happen to be on birth control, it's less likely to implant, even if that was true, which it's not, then if you're comparing lost embryos, you're going to have way more that are created, fertilized, and never implanted when you're not on birth control than when you are. Does that make sense? Am I making sense here? So this doesn't even make sense to me. And I think this is one more way. And everybody doesn't knowingly take part in this as a participation that's trying to have like an end cause of villainizing and thus eventually making illegal birth control. But I think that this is something that people participate in that continues that and doesn't even make sense because it would serve to reason that if your true goal is less fertilized embryos that are lost, then being on birth control is going to be way better at that. So that's not the ultimate goal. And I think posts like that really make that clear. So in this post, I take screenshots from an excellent article on chastity.com, always a reliable source. I'm very sure that is, you know, science-based, research-backed, you know, all the good things. And show how the medical community covered the fact that birth control can cause man-made abortions, false, as opposed to spontaneous naturally occurring abortions or miscarriages, which are allowed by God. I mean, we're going to ignore the religious parts of this, okay? Um, and as with my last post on this subject, birth control pills, I would like that as many followers as possible reshare this post on their stories to get information out as to as many Christians as possible. I also think it is short-sighted and false to say that, uh, Christians would believe this. This is not a facet of Christianity to believe that birth control is bad. That's not the case. People can be Christian and not think that birth control is the devil. In fact, I've never read that in the Bible, actually. I've read a lot of the Bible, and it's never said birth control is the devil. All right, so let's look through some of the rest. The following screenshots are taken from chastity.com. Again, I'm sure reliable sources here. Unfortunately, not all doctors are aware that the pill can act as an abortifacient. Uh, unfortunately, we are well aware that this is not the truth. I'm more than happy to bring up some sources for you all here in a moment. One of my favorite sources to use because it aggregates data very well is a source called uptodate.com. And while we're talking, I'll just pull it up for you so that I have a place to show you that this is bonkers. Dr. Walter Larimore, hmm. He prescribed the pill for 29 years, used it in his own marriage before anyone informed him it could have such an effect. <laughs> okay, well, sorry to let you all in on a secret, but Dr. Walt here has decided to take some information from people he probably should have known not to take information from in 20 years of practicing as a physician. That is wildly insane. Uh, let's look and see who this person is. 
I think this is also always a good thing to do as well. Um, when you find yourself not sure how you feel about something, and I've said this in a video before, wondering like, hmm, that sounds like MDJ talked about it at some point. I don't, is this true or not true? It sounds like it could be a little bit of Woo Squad. Then I do have an Instagram saved section called the Woo Squad, which this person belongs in. So I think it's always good to kind of look up these people and find out like, well, tell me more information about this person, okay? So we all know collectively here that this is crazy information, but I think understanding the process of how to get from, huh, that doesn't sound right, to, ah, it's not only not right, it's sinister, is a good thing for people to learn. So Walter Larimore, tell me more. Practicing family physician for over 40 years, 40 years and family practice delivering 1,500 babies. How many babies is that? So 40 years. That's 14,000 days. Okay, that is 0.1 babies per week. That is, uh, if I only delivered a baby every 10 weeks, I would uh, absolutely not be advertising that. That is a wild thing to make a point of your practice. That's, that's hardly anything. I deliver more babies than that in a, a couple of hours at my job. What books have they wrote? They work for Focus on the Family, uh, flag number one. We're going to find red flags all over the place with this person, I think. I want to find like news articles or something, but most of these are just religious sites and their own site. We've lost some people in the process of streaming about this, but that's okay. I think it's still invaluable information. Okay, anyway, don't care anymore. This is somebody who has sold out science for religion, and that's very obvious in the first five minutes of searching for them. When another doctor clued him in, he said that he had never heard of such a thing and that the claim seemed to be outlandish, excessive, or inaccurate. He began to review the medical literature. <laughs> I don't know what literature you're looking at, my friend, but you picked the wrong one to disprove the claims. However, it, he was compelled to stop. Okay, this is, this is woo-woo. All right, so let's just go on a reliable source now and see. All right, they go down here and say, it's a humbling realization that birth control pills show that they reduce the likelihood of implantation. All right, this is a, uh, again, goes back to what I was saying earlier, that if you are on a birth control pill, you're so much less likely to ovulate that the chances of even creating an embryo in the first place are incredibly low. We don't really know if the chances of implantation are lower on or off a contraceptive pill. In theory, some people think it might be lower, but I still think we need to back it up here and look at the bigger picture, which is that you're so much less likely to have an embryo that the chances of an embryo not implanting are way lower on birth control pills. Now, that being said, if somebody is very against, you know, the, even the possibility of decreased chance of implantation in the very unusual event that an embryo is made, then fine, don't use birth control pills. That is completely reasonable as an individual. What's not reasonable is to go around saying it causes abortion. That is patently false. That's not how this works. That is not an abortion. If, if birth control pills caused abortion, it would be fine that we were all, you know, not able to access actual abortion medications, right? Like, I wouldn't care if the Supreme Court made mifepristone illegal to use because birth control pills could just stand in. That doesn't even make sense. All right, here we go. Y'all see that? Up-to-date is a very reliable source. It is not available to everybody in the general public because it is extremely uh, heavy on the medical side and meant for medical providers, but I'm sure we can't even find it here. All right, I'll show you the process of just Googling yourself to a reliable source. I know that this is not true and I have 
places on my YouTube that I could go and just pull up a link, but I just want to show you how to get yourself to a reliable source. So we're going to say, I think Google Scholar is a good place to start if you want to be able to begin the process. And again, everything you find on here is not going to be reliable. You need to find good quality information. I feel like I'm giving a class on, <laughs> on internet health literacy. So we'll say hormonal contraception and abortion. Most of these actually are probably going to be about starting a contraception after abortion. Yeah. Well, let's just do a generalized Google search. I mean, these are wild claims. And again, I can pull up the data for you just from my page, but I think it's good that you see how to find it. All right, so anytime you're gonna do a Google search about something medical, I want you first to start with looking at what is, who is posting this and to think in your head, is this a reliable source or not a reliable source, okay? I find Planned Parenthood to be a very reliable source, but that could be construed as a very biased source, right? Because of what they're in the business of. I don't actually think that's the case. I think Planned Parenthood does everything very much uh, by the science, but I think it's okay to skip anything like that if you feel like, mm, I'm not really actually sure if that would be something that would be a reliable source. So we're going to pro-life Wisconsin, probably not the most reliable source for this question. WebMD is probably a reasonable source. I think NPR is probably a reasonable source. Medical News Today, probably a reasonable source. And then you get all the way down here and you're at National Institute of Health, which is also a reasonable source. But I think for the general public, finding a source that is going to make a conglomerate of information for you is, is really helpful. So let's just start with WebMD talking about that and they're going to say that it doesn't reduce the that that abortions are not caused by um, taking birth control pills you're going to find all of those everywhere and again it, when I post this on YouTube I'm happy to go pull all of my other um, resources when I you know talk about these things on oh that's weird when I talk about these things like on the main channel and have time to come up with a resource list for you it's not probably worth it right now, but I do think part of hanging out with me here, I'm hoping, will be how can we teach more people to just be more critical of the information that they hear and read and how to find appropriate information when they need it. All right, I'm 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 kind of bored of this one. We're going to find a different one. This is an appendectomy video, which is a very cute video from the breakfast year who's a physician and I have that saved because my son had an appendectomy. He's He was six at the time, he's seven now. And that was really helpful in showing him kind of what was going on and what we were doing. I don't have any idea what this is. Okay, this chocolate mousse actually um, is epic. I guess I found a recipe that I wanted to, to make. This is Rebecca M. Gregory. She is a survivor of the Boston Marathon who has been on my channel talking about her pregnancy as an amputee and her experience in the Boston Marathon. She's a very, very interesting and inspiring person. I don't know why I saved this uh, picture of her, but I'm glad I did so I could remind you all that I have an interview with her that's great if you want to go watch it. Sometimes I just save like unhinged products because someday I want to do a product that's like the wildest things that have been advertised to me on social media. Can y'all hear that? Is that audio coming through? <laughs> this is unhinged. <laughs> Okay, I'll turn the volume up a little. Premarital sex is a sin, and those who participate in it are worshippers of the devil. Victory reads. I at first thought that you were talking about my production value, and I was going to profusely apologize about how uh, absolutely terrible I am at anything production value, and it's going to take me some time. But um, then I realized you're talking about the production value of this video, and yeah, can we please appreciate that? I'm. I think one of you tagged me in this and I saved it because at first I thought maybe this is like 
another um, Dr. D and the Chaos Machine, which we have just absolutely loved and enjoying together on the YouTube channel. And then I realized about here that I'm like, yeah, this is a troll. This is not something that's real. Hopefully that's not like TOS violation. I, I don't think it is. It's fake. Anyway, that was unhinged. So <laughs> yeah, it's giving me 90 sex ed vibes. Yes. Man, if you haven't seen the Dr. D and the Chaos Machine videos, like, run don't walk as soon as the stream is over you need to go watch it oh and i will let you in on a little hint this monday's video is the second in that series with dr d and the chaos machine